routine scratch work learners. For this video, you need the NSC November for the year 2022, and we're focusing on paper two. We are going to be focusing on question one first, and question one is cost accounting, cost accounting. You have to understand that the examiner can test this question in several different ways. The examiner can bring a full production cost statement. The examiner can also bring an abridged income statement. So make sure you practice all those questions. Uh, a full production cost statement and abridged income statement also needs to be practiced. But I am going to focus on the demands of this paper. And on 1.2.1, it says calculate the following for the financial year and the 30 June 2022 direct labor cost. So we want to calculate the direct labor cost. We are told in the information that there are six workers who are employed in the production. So I know here I have six workers. Each worker has worked 1,840 hours, no more time. So I'll come here and multiply that by 1,840. This is the no more time. And they are paid 40 rand per hour. So I'll multiply this by 40 rand. That is the rate. This would then give me 441,600. It is very important that when we do these calculations, we need to remember the number of employees and the hours as well as the normal time rate. And then it says the overtime register reflected 230 hours and they are paid 1.6 times more than the normal rate. So we need to calculate now the overtime rate. The overtime rate is paid at 1.6 times more than the normal rate. So we say 1.6, we multiply that then by the normal rate of 40 rand, then that is going to give us 64 rands. So 64 rands becomes the overtime rate. Then I'll say my 64 rands, multiply that by the total number of hours that has been worked, that is my 230 hours. Then I will get an amount that is 14,720. So, so far I have my no more time, then I have my overtime. Then the last bullet says production staff received a production bonus of 8% of the no more time. So here I have to come and calculate the bonus and they're getting 8% of the no more time. So my no more time is 441,600. That is my no more time. Then I multiply that by 8%, so that is eight over 100. This would then give me 35,328. When I have added all of this, then it gives me 491,648. It is very important, dear learners, that if the examiner brings such information to calculate the direct labor cost, we have to remember that there's no more time over time, and there can be bonus. But at times, the examiner can bring uh, items such as the employer's contributions. We have to consider such adjustments as well when they bring um, adjustments such as the employer's contributions. They must be added to the direct labor cost. Employer's contributions must be added to the direct labor cost. So in this paper, they wanted us to calculate the direct labor cost. But at times, the examiner can want us to calculate the direct material cost, whereby we would then consider maybe we are given meters and we also uh, do calculations. I want to encourage you to look for papers that the examiner was uh, demanding that learners calculate the direct material cost. Please look into such papers. Then the next part of this question then demands that we calculate the factory overhead cost. So in this factory overhead cost, we are given the total before corrections, all right? But at times the examiner can want you to do um, a, a longer factory overhead cost note that is having more information. In this one, we're only given insurance than water and electricity. But at times you can get one that is quite more adjustments. 
then this one reads on the factor overhead cost note. The bookkeeper calculated the factor overhead cost to be 541,600. However, he made the following errors, which must be adjusted. He included the entire insurance expense of 32.5 to the factor overhead cost instead of only 60% of this expense. So what I would advise you is come and subtract the error that was committed. So subtract 32.5. You take out the error. Then you come and record the correct amount that must be recorded. So here we have taken out the 32.5, but we are told that we should record 60%. So we now need 60%. So let me come and do my calculation on the top here. That is, we need 60% of this amount. So I'll take my 32.5, all right? So I have my 32.5, and then we need to calculate 60%, all right? So we need to calculate 60%, and then that's going to give you 19.5. Then the right amount to be recorded here is 19.5. So I'll come and say plus 19.5. Then the difference, therefore, between these two amounts, if you say minus 32.5, if you say minus 32.5, and then you come, then you say plus 19.5, plus 19.5, uh, 19 you then end up with a negative 13,000. That is what you then bring here, a negative 13,000. When you come to water and electricity, the adjustment reads that he allocated 54,000 to effect to water and electricity using uh, the ratio three as to two as to two. So the three is for the factory, the three is for the factory, and then the two is for the cells, and then the other two is for the office. This expense should have been split. So we um, allocated this expense uh, incorrectly. So again, I would advise come here and then uh, subtract, come and subtract the incorrect amount. So you would come here and you would subtract the amount that was incorrectly placed, which is your 54,000 minus 54,000. Now you need to calculate the correct amount you have to understand that this 54,000, it is when we had calculated from a particular amount that was given. I'm going to do the calculation here. So we don't know the initial amount is unknown, but when we uh, allocated it, we then say three over seven. How do we get seven? Uh, we say three plus two, that's five, plus two, that's seven. And then that gave us 54,000. That gave us 54,000, all right? So we want to get this unknown here. To get the unknown, the easiest way is to say 54,000 multiplied by seven over three, okay? So if I would do that with you, um, we are now saying uh, 54,000, 54,000 multiplied by three over seven, multiplied by three, uh, over seven. And then this, sorry, supposed to be seven over three, actually. Multiply by seven over three, seven over three, seven over three. Okay, seven over three. And then it would then give us 126,000. So the amount here becomes 126,000. That is your unknown amount, the amount that was uh, incorrectly allocated was 126,000. Now that we have our 126, we can correctly allocate it then by saying 126,000. We are supposed to allocate it now as 2, as to 1, as to 1. If you add that, that gives you 4. So you multiply this by 2 over 4. All right. So we come here, we then say 126,000, 126,000, that is the amount now that we must allocate. Then you multiply that by 2 over 4. 2 over 4, and then it gives you 63,000. So you come here, then you now say plus 63,000. Okay, so now you can close this up when you say minus 54 plus 63, minus 54 plus minus 54,000, uh, plus 63,000, plus 63,000, and then it gives you positive 9,000. So you come here, you say plus 9,000. Then you need to close this 
to get the amount here at the bottom. I want to encourage you, dear learners, to remember to add the amount that would have been given by the examiner. So in this case, you have to remember to add your 541,000, 541,600, 541,600, and then you come and you add, sorry, rather you subtract, you say minus 13,000, minus 13,000, and then you add your 9,000, then you add your 9,000. Okay, so once you do that, you then have 537,600. So you come here, it is your 537,600. All right, so remember when you are doing the factor over at post note, the examiner can bring this a bit longer. It can be stretched out. Remember expenses such as depreciation also come into your factory overhead cost, but depreciation only on the factory um, uh, equipment, depreciation on the factory equipment. In other words, we're focusing on the factory items, only on the factory items. So do not only be limited to such questions. Look at questions that can also do broader calculations that have to do with the factory. Then lastly, I want to touch on this one in the remaining one minute. It says calculate the total cost of production. In this question, again, they wanted us to do it um, as a small calculation, but in the exam, it can come as a full production cost statement where you add your direct material cost plus your direct labor cost to get the prime cost, then you come to effect overheads. I want to remind you about the working processes all right, it is very important that you consider that and then for you to get your total cost of production of finished goods. But in this case, they wanted us to do it as a shorter version. So you come here, I'll just take my direct labor cost. It is your 491648 and your direct material cost. In our direct material cost, I think it was given. If you come here, our direct material cost was given to be 652800 six, five, two, eight hundred. And then you bring your effect overhead, which is the last one we calculated, which is your five, thirty seven, six hundred. You add all of these three figures, you end up with one million six hundred and eighty two thousand and forty eight. Therefore, that becomes the final answer. All right, dear learners, I hope you're practicing. Please continue practicing so that you can get better marks.